Good morning. Amy Jacobson here. John Anthony, the one and only in Hello. for Dan Prop. Three-hour show now. Yes, John he has Anthony. a three-hour show, Black and Right, yeah. which airs Saturday from... 12 to 3. 12 to 3. I was going to get it right. <laughs> 12 to 3 right here, AM 560. And uh, hopefully you can move the show to 4 to 7 someday. Wow, I would and, love that. Yeah, we'll see. But you're in the WIND family. We That's know right. that. So That's right. I'm so glad you're here. Well, Biden has had a disastrous few weeks from hell, you might want to say. Uh, inflation at a 40-year high. That disastrous and deadly withdrawal from Afghanistan, which was months ago, but still on people's minds. And then the voter rights bill going down and... What has he done right? Uh, unified the American people against him. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but what you know, maybe he needs a war to distract people to yeah. reset after his you know big one year anniversary in office. With more on that, let's welcome back to the program Scott McKay. He is publisher of Hayride and contributor to the American Spectator. Good morning, Mr. McKay. How are you? Miss Jacobson, how are you? I'm good. Or do you want to do the first name thing or the last name thing? <laughs> Uh, let's do the first name. Thing. Okay. All right. So, Scott, you wrote an article about Biden needs a war. Don't give him one. Why does Biden need a war right now? Well, I mean, you know, I, I, at this point, it's a cliche, the whole wag the dog thing. I mean, we've had so many um, kind of military adventures that were suspiciously tied to flagging presidential approval ratings and so forth. Um, you know, the whole Libya adventure, you had Clinton in Kosovo. And Joe Biden is the kind of guy that you can't put that, behind, you know, put that past. Um, and then, you know, lo and behold, we have this Ukraine thing that comes up, which, you know, is, I, I mean, I, you know, I don't want to disparage the Ukrainians, but their problems really are not our problems. Right. Um, I, I have yet to talk to not political people, but like ordinary folks, I've yet to talk to one who cares about Ukraine at all or has any interest in the United States getting involved in some sort of conflict over Ukraine. Yeah, but and don't yet, you think if they, if because Putin, his end game is to put, you know, one of his allies in power so that they could be more oh, pro-Russia. No right, so if there's, we, there's he takes no an doubt inch, we'll give, that. you know, I mean, if he, we give him an inch, he'll take a foot and he'll try to conquer the world, don't you think? Or you just think he'd stop? Yeah, no, I mean, I look, and, and I mean, I get that, um, you know, the, to which the response is, uh, do we, are we really in a position where we want to get involved in another kind of Vietnam type situation? I mean, because that was the exact um, rationale for continuing to, to, to up the ante in Vietnam. And, you know, I, that was the Cold War. And, you know, we're not supposed to be in a Cold War with the Russians at this point. So, uh, you know, I, I, then I, the other question is, is, can we do anything in Ukraine? I mean, if Putin really wants the place, he's going to get the place. Oh, yeah. True. I mean, it's 125,000. It's war on our part. Yeah, it's 100,000, 125,000 troops. And he claims that they're doing military exercises right now and that <laughs> this is all misinformation. But yesterday they said, you know, they announced the State Department that 8,500 U.S. troops um, have been placed in on heightened alert that they can be deployed within the next five days to the region, not to Ukraine. Do you really think they're going to do that and join the NATO allies? I, you know, at, at this point, I just don't know because, uh, I mean, we're talking about the Biden administration, <laughs> yeah. um, and it's hard to predict or or forecast, um, you know, what they're doing because, I, you know, I don't, sense that these are very strategic thinkers running the country. <laughs> I definitely agree. Hey, Scott, how you doing? Um, you know, hey, how are you? I, I'm doing great. Uh, do you, I, I look at this, I think Biden w learned one thing from Barack Obama, how to be petty. Uh, you think a lot of this has to do with, with, with blowback from how um, Biden felt that the president over there treated him and his son during um, this last election? You think a lot of that has to, has a lot to do with how Biden is interacting with them? Because um, Senator, I mean, um, Pompeo said that he basically gave them a green light to go and do whatever they want to do. I don't think they're going to do it. But is this the petty Biden? And, and, and I think that's a dangerous place to be if the president of the United States is going to be this petty about something that his son did. Well, I, I, I have a theory which... Um, I'm almost 
frightened to 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 voice it. But you know, my theory is that everybody over there in, involved in this knows what the end game is, which is Putin putting a pro-Russian government in place in Ukraine. And one of the first things that you know said pro-Russian government in Ukraine would do is dish all the Hunter Biden dirt, uh, you know, involving whether whether it's Burisma or even stuff that we didn't even know about. Um, I, you know, there are people who tell you that one of the things that has gone on with respect to Ukraine for years is, you know, we give these guys foreign aid and it washes through contractors. Mm. Uh, who you know have business addresses in Washington D.C. and happen to be connected to the establishment here, yeah. um, and so like it's a big money laundering operation. Yeah. And if you got a pro-Russian government in in Ukraine, uh, like all of that comes out, right? And yeah. of course the Russians are you know fairly interesting in terms of. Uh, you know, not only will they they murder people, but they'll also dish information out that that uh, you know makes people look bad. And I, I you know I wonder if they're not scared to death that that might happen. And this is you know has the effect of of fueling some of this, yeah. um, which which certainly I think tie into the the pettiness part, which is you know like nobody cares about Joe and Hunter Biden's problems. Right. Um, but if we end up at some sort of military conflicts that they can protect, uh, you know, some kind of scam that, that uh, <laughs> the powers that be in this country have been running. I mean, I, you know, I don't think that's worth a drop of blood of anybody in our military. Yeah. So considering the disastrous and deadly withdrawal from Afghanistan, which I, I have always said that that was President Biden's Jimmy Carter moment. Um, no question. If you worked right now in the embassy in Ukraine. Wouldn't you be already have your family on a commercial flight out of there because you can't trust the government to come in and get you when things get bad? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think at this point, you know, you've got all the information you need. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I, any place where, um, you know, where you, you could be in harm's way, I think you need to assume that you are in harm's way after Afghanistan. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't. It, it, there should be no Americans left in Kiev by you know noon today. I would say. <laughs> hey Scott, you know I love the article, the most fun Senate race of 2022. If if the Senate had more John Kennedys, it would be such a lively place. <laughs> what do you What do yeah, you think no, is going to happen? We need to change out. I mean, you know, the other senator from Louisiana is Bill Cassidy, yeah. which I, you know he's originally from Chicago. So the big joke around here is. You know, can, can we send this guy back to Illinois? Uh, and you know, Cassidy is the boring guy, and Kennedy is the fun guy. Yeah. And it just so happens that Kennedy is also the guy that stands by principles. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I, he's not going to lose re-election this fall. Um, but there are two Democrats running against him in a jungle primary, um, and those two Democrats are um, at least the way the interaction between them is going to play out could very well uh, change the Democrat Party in Louisiana permanently um, and really sort of along racial lines, but also along ideological lines. Uh, The white guy who's running is uh, they found this guy. He's an airline pilot and uh, has never run for anything before uh, and is just boring. And, you know, he spouts kind of boilerplate uh, DNC narratives um, and complains about, you know, Kennedy voting on, on January 6th of last year to, to not certify, I think it was the Arizona uh, uh, electoral uh, college vote and so forth. Um, and, you know, they're making a big deal about that when really almost nobody in Louisiana cares. Um, and, you know, and then along comes this guy, Gary Chambers, who's sort of a uh, Stacey Abrams wannabe, oh uh, and the first the first ad that he that he pops out is uh, you know him smoking a blunt oh, and right. complaining about uh, not only the, um, the you know that marijuana ought to be legal, but that pro- prosecutions and arrests 
uh, with respect to marijuana possession or, you know, disproportionately affect black people and the whole thing is a racist exercise. You know, and then he's sitting there smoking this this yeah. obnoxious bullet <laughs> in the ad. Um, he got which, you know, has the effect of yeah, he has, it has the effect of completely uh, polarizing the at least the Democrat electorate in the state. You know, black people love it, white people hate it. The governor here, John Bell Edwards, who's a Democrat, um, you know, who claims to be a centrist and is not. Yeah, he comes out. Oh, this is I. You shouldn't be doing that in an ad. It's inappropriate. And the whole thing is that sixty uh, percent of the registered Democrats in Louisiana are black, thirty-six percent are white, and now they are um, basically polarized between those two Democrats. Kennedy's going to walk away with the race, but if black Democrats get so irritated that they'll never vote for a white Democrat in Louisiana again, yeah. Um, this state is going to be majority Republican, and it'll have black Democrats. And there won't be any more white Democrats elected because where are they going to find the votes? And the really fun thing is if you go – and you could do this. You go to uh, civicus.com, which is S C I V I Q S dot com. Mm-hmm. It's this polling firm that has this big universe of folks that have opted in to get online surveys from this, like 150,000 people. Wow. Um, and they every week they're polling Joe Biden's approval rating. Um, and in Louisiana, you, like you get very granular, detailed demographics and so forth as to as to what his approval is. Joe Biden's approval rating among white Louisianians is eleven percent. Wow! And that is this guy Luke Nixon, who's the white guy in the in the center. Right? That's his base because that's like all he talks about is uh, is you know national Democrat things. So he's got 11% of the white vote, which is like 7% of the overall vote in the state. And they think that they're going to get this guy into the runoff with that. And it's like, no, guys. <laughs> Real quick, we move over to like, I don't know, like I don't know where the money's going to go to continue you to uh, qualify, much less the election, but you know, you're dead. So it's fun. It's going to be a great race, uh, especially for Republicans and um you know, it, the damage that's going to be done to the state Democrat Party is, is, you know, a long time coming. So good. And then real quick, Georgia Senator Warlock, is he uh, do you think he's guaranteed to win again? Uh, I mean, Herschel this is Walker. not a real good year for Democrats. No. So, uh, you know, I, I think the question there is, you know, who's going to be the Republican nominee? And, I, I, you know, I know Herschel Walker was. Uh, you know, it's Trump's uh, supported candidate right. and, and the guy with all the name recognition. You know, we'll see if that holds up. I mean, I, I, I'm of the opinion that after Georgia passed the election integrity bill mm-hmm. that got everybody so upset over there last year. Oh, my God. That's- um, yeah, about- I mean, Senator Warlock on ML, um, Martin Luther King Jr. Day, he, Senator Warlock was in a church saying, I'm not free because of this election integrity vote that bill that was passed i'm not a free man i'm a black man i'm like what is he talking i mean it's, it's really <laughs> grasping there. you're a u.s senator i, I mean know, like, he's not free like you know. he still doesn't have any freedom you're the u.s senator from I mean, georgia, from well, georgia. You, 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 it's it's like the same thing you get like lebron james saying those kinds yeah. of things oh, right yeah. and it's like uh, it's me. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you know like it just kind of rings hollow when you say it you know um I, I, you know, I, I just like I think the guy going in, just like the other one over there whose name escapes me uh, for the moment, uh, those were kind of fluky situations. Yeah. And I mean, you know, if you want to blame Donald Trump for that, I think there's some awesome? uh, validity in that. Um, awesome. And it was just sort of this weird deal that both of them came up at the same time right. at the exact wrong time for the GOP. Now you've passed this. Uh, electoral integrity thing and if the if you know if you don't have a republican primary that is uh so knocked down drag out that you know that, that you, you split into factions i just don't see warnick getting real yeah, i agree i mean I, I like to me i think he's one of the uh Delightful. you know he like he i don't think this is a guy that can withstand scrutiny as an as an incumbent right uh especially this year I mean, 
um, you know, when Joe Biden's approval rating, depending on what poll you're looking at, is 33. Um, and at, at the best, I mean, I don't know, I don't know who Fox News is polling, but they've got him at 47, and their poll has always been far and away the best that Biden has shown up in, and he's below, you know, below 50 in in the Fox poll. Yeah. Uh, and the you know real clear average of the, of the polls, he's at 40. I mean, a president who's at 40 going into his first midterm, um, generally Incredible. speaking, gets crushed yeah. his party. Hey, so, hey, hey, Scott, you said something earlier, and, and I, here's, I, I, I am a black man. I'm, I'm, I'm blackish, I should say. Uh, but I, I, I think what's happening across America is now is black people are waking up. They're tired of these clown shows. They're tired of these Democrats coming in. I ain't no ways tired, and you got hot sauce in your purse. I think, I think they're, they're, they're getting sick and tired of these emotional tugs at their heart, and they really, they're ready for somebody to start doing something all of that foolishness, in my opinion, is is going to be called to the carpet, and I think the twenty twenty two and the twenty twenty four elections are going to bring that out in, in in such a way because Trump started, he started something, and we played a clip on Charlemagne the God earlier. Everybody's asking where's Trump because we at least we knew where he stood, but these politicians with these clown shows to black people, enough is enough. What are your thoughts about that? Well, I mean, I think black people are people. Right. And I mean, you know, yeah, OK, you did all this and you got the vote out and whatever. And it's a year later. And, you know, just like everybody else, I think the black community is saying, yeah, this guy's not very good. Like, I mean, you know, yeah, OK, we put him in office, but what are we getting out of it? And, it, you know, they don't have any deliverables, deliverables. They've, I mean, they've not improved the economy. Now, you, got, you know, you had this effective, massive tax increase that happens to be pretty regressive. Uh, which is, you know, 7% inflation. Everybody gets 7% tax increase at this point. Um, and, you know, nobody voted for that. It just, you know, it just happened. I mean, and you see some of the things that have really shot up um, in terms of like used cars are up 30%. The average price um, of a used and, car is $28,000 right now. Wow. NBC just right. Did it. Okay. So if you're, morning. you know, if you're working class or below, and your car completely breaks down, I mean, like, what does that do for you? You can't afford anything. And, I mean, you know, you're buying a, a, a junker at the bottom of the used car spectrum, and it's still more than you can afford. Do you think those people are happy with the guy in, in, in office now? They don't care if he's a Democrat. Or, or try go- going um, to the grocery so, you know, that's store. That's problem. I mean, we, John and I were talking about mm-hmm. this during the break. Shelves are empty. empty. At grocery stores. Yep. I don't know what's going on with canned cat food, but I went to three <laughs> stores yesterday. And I like, where is the canned cat food? And she said, oh, it's a shipping supply. They're hoarding issue. it. Said, no, they're right. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, and I, like my joke is uh, that, you know, this better not, and there are, there are some indications that it that it might be, you know, like this better not affect the supply of Maker's Mark around the country <laughs> or else, you know. The, the heads of our ruling elite will right. be on pikes from Bangor but, but to La Jolla. Before Christmas, um, they scared us, though, and they said there might not be enough wine for Thanksgiving and there might not be enough booze. And then people went out and bought all this thinking, oh, my God, I'm not going to have my wine. I have to have my wine. And then we scared well, children I mean, and said you know, you're not going to get your toys for Christmas. Yeah. I mean, we just have been – they've been ruling with fear because what they fear, well, they can control sure. you. And that's the bottom line. All right, Scott, well, okay, we have to leave yeah. it here for today. But thank you so much for joining us. He is publisher at the Hayride and contributor to the American Spectator. Thank you, and we'll uh, have you back soon. Thanks, Amy. Thanks, John. Right. Y'all have a great day. You too. you too. And he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. Before you see it on TV, share it on Facebook or read about it in the paper. Hear it here first. This is Chicago's Morning Answer on AM 560. The answer. Fellows need an annual health exam for work or just want to start the year prior.